Welcome back for another episode of the Everything Transformers, Everything G.I. Joe podcast. This is episode eight, and let's get right to it. Like always, we'll just jump into some housekeeping, look at some acquisitions, and then we'll talk about some news. So let's get right to it right away. Yeah, we're off schedule once again. So we, I was on vacation and a lot of things happened September. So unfortunately I had to skip September's episode, but we're back here now in October. And basically we're still shooting for once a month, mid month. And so next episode should be around November 15th, 16th, 17th, some, somewhere around there. That's housekeeping, but yeah, let's get right into it. And let's talk about acquisitions that basically I acquired uh, since our last talk. You know what? I was on vacation in the end of August and the beginning of September, and I had a big trip. We went to California, went to Hawaii, and I'll be honest, I came home with nothing. I went to a bunch of Walmarts, I went to a bunch of Targets, and I didn't find not one thing to buy. So nothing happened there, but you know what? That didn't stop me because there was a lot of retail therapy. Since the last time we talked, I was able to find a Hot Wheels Bumblebee. And actually, in my local area, I've found eighth in the last week. Uh, I left them there for other people, but they're getting easier to find. I don't know if the cases are going out easier more, but I don't know. I found, I got one for myself and I've found them more. Anyways, related to G.I. Joe Classified, I was able to get pick up the Retro Cobra Commander, which I've been super excited about since we've basically seen the mickey mouse version and now it's for the his tank uh, has lab so that took a long while to get the mainline quote unquote mainline re retro version out to the public but long story short i got that guy super excited about that guy um also i was able to pick up the once a man cobra commander the special uh, edition limited edition the movie version where he turns into a snake i was able to pick that guy up so that's pretty cool. I know a lot of people out there have been finding that one a little hard to get. And he wasn't exclusive. Uh, we were able to get him. I just walked into a GameStop here in Canada. I had the number. I asked to reserve one. They're like, yes, we'll get you one. And basically it came in. It came in while I was on vacation. And I was so worried because they have this thing where they basically only keep your pre-orders for like several days or a week or so. And I kind of like... Just made the assumption that, okay, well, I'm away on vacation. They're going to call me. I don't have access to my telephone or my voicemail. That basically that I was going to lose my pre-order. And long story short, I came back. I had another voicemail. I checked it and they still had kept it because they knew that I was a long time G.I. Joe collector. And so they made sure they wanted to talk to me before they let it go. So long story short, I ended up getting one of those. That's pretty cool. Then also G.I. Joe Classified, I finally got the Cobra Stinger. That was um, basically another purchase from GameStop. So I was able to get my discount on it. So that's pretty cool. And then if we switch over to Transformers, I've certainly been able to pick up a bunch of uh, vintage Generation 1 Transformers just recently, uh, the other day. I was able to get a uh, Trigger Happy, who is in okay condition. But you know what? I have this motto where I would rather have a sample of a figure, i.e. non-perfect figure, than basically not have that figure and hold out for a 100% perfect or complete figure. I actually threw up a poll of about the same question. If you'd rather have the perfect figure or not have the figure and just have a sample on our YouTube community page. And there's a poll there. You can go check out the results. It's very interesting how that turned out. Anyways, related to Transformers, I was able to get my Studio Series 86 Prime once again from GameStop. GameStop up here in Canada is pretty good. You're able to put in a lot of pre-orders and get what you want. It's the number one place where I pretty much get my stuff. And the discount comes in nicely because I love getting deals on stuff. I mean, that was a lot there. I actually did another big trade with somebody through the mail. Uh, not a local trade. It's something I do and I find it works fairly well. You have to find a good community of people to be able to trust them. But anyways, it worked well. And we'll talk about that specific trade later in the podcast. So that was basically acquisitions for like almost two months, I would say. You know, more moving forward, we'll hopefully get this on track. We'll do once a month, like the acquisitions for once a month. Okay, 
So like, let's just jump right into it. And we're just talking topics here now. So I've kind of got like a list of topics laid out that we'll go through. And I think this is going to be a pretty in-depth, in-depth podcast. There's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about here. And it's going to be, once again, a combination of everything Transformers and everything G.I. Joe, like the podcast title says. Now, actually, one more housekeeping issue. Now, do we need like an intro sound or like a, like an intro to this podcast? Like, I think we might need to something work on something about that. And also, I have, I have been toying with the idea of changing the name but uh i'm gonna put that put that on the back burner for now so let's get 10 episodes in until we see what we can do and this is our eighth episode and let's see i want to get hit this to 100 views i want to get 100 people who have listened to this podcast so if you listen and you like what we're doing make sure you hit like think about hitting subscribe and possibly tell one of your friends about this episode or this this podcast Tell your grandmother, hey, you need something to listen to while you're cleaning? This guy talks about some kick-ass toys. So something like that. Spread the word. I'd like to get up to 100 and see how it goes from there. Anyways, okay, let's get right to it. Now, because I haven't done a podcast in uh, two months, basically, I am a little behind on my list of topics. The, The notes that I wrote up, I was thinking about talking about these in September, so Quickly, the first section might seem a little out of date, but you're still going to get my opinions on things. So let's quickly talk about PulseCon. And of course, they did G.I. Joe and Transformers. I don't really care about the rest of the stuff, like the Power Rangers or the Star Wars stuff. You know, you're only here, I'm only here for G.I. Joe and Transformers. So let's just quickly run through and get my opinions on a few things. And you know what? Like always, what I always recommend If you listen to my opinions on things, feel free. You either agree with them or you disagree with them or you don't really care. But feel free to go back, leave some of your own comments down below in the comment section and give me your insight on how you feel about what I said or your just independent thought on the same toy. Okay, so promise me you'll do that. Promise. Okay. Okay. so let's get to it. Okay, so full disclosure here, I had recorded a bunch of this and for some reason my computer messed up and I lost a lot of it. So I got to start over again. And you know what? Let's just go through this very quickly. Um, So because I missed last month's podcast, we're going to just go quickly through my personal reactions to what uh, the Hasbro team showed at their PulseCon for G.I. Joe and Transformers. Let's just jump right in and we'll start with G.I. Joe classified figures. So they showed like four mainline figures, an exclusive figure, and some 3D reveals uh, and kind of a name only. So quickly, um, right away, everyone was kind of excited to see the exclusive Starduster. Me, personally, the thing is, Starduster looks pretty cool and I know a lot of people are excited for him. But I actually never had one as a kid as part of the Real American Hero line. So for me, you know, Starduster doesn't really hold too much nostalgia for me. So, I mean, I'm probably going to skip them. The only thing, uh, just recently, it was uh, brought to uh, attention that when you do get him inside the box, inside the packaging, you still get that little cereal box with the the G.I. Joe O's or whatever. You have to go digging inside the box and it's part of the packaging. So make sure you find that. Don't throw out the box without getting that Starduster cereal box. Anyways, moving on, we'll talk about the four main figures there. And of course, that is Leatherneck, Dial Tone, Xandar, and the Saw Viper. Now, right away, if you have been paying attention, I usually kind of do my collecting on a budget. And, you know, I have certain, you know, limitations. I'm not rich. So I often don't fully buy like a full wave of figures. I usually pick and choose which ones I like to purchase. And right away out of these four, there's two that are to the top of the list and two that are like, you know, near the bottom of the list. So moving forward, what I usually do is I often do pre-order all of them and then later on in the process decide which ones are going to keep. So like I said, there's two that I'm definitely probably going to keep, one that I'm for sure going to keep. Now, we'll split these out and talk about each one. So, related to the figures I'm actually interested in, the number one figure out of all four of these releases is Xandar. And you're like, well, why are you interested in Xandar? And you know what? Xandar is an interesting one because I've talked about before that when they do these classified figures, they kind of have two routes they go. They either go 
It's a one-for-one -one Real American Hero reissue, or we've quote-unquote classified it and brought it into the modern age, okay? So they kind of go back and forth, and if you want a great example of this, I always talk about like Shipwreck. The Shipwreck figure is a one-for-one, -one, a Real American Hero version. And then something like, almost like Rock and Roll is a classified version because he, he doesn't have that like 100% original at that Real American Hero look. He's got like an updated look and he looks polished. He looks gritty. So that's a classified version. Shipwreck is a Real American Hero version. Xander, I find, is a good mix of both of them and the both versions. So he just really stands out to me. Like, he just, the hair is flowing, it looks really cool, the decorations, his padding, his, like, his armor, the ne the neckerchief on his, uh, on his body, all of it just stands out and looks really amazing. They did a very good job with this figure. So, for me, a lot of people will get this figure because, oh, well, I need to complete my Dreadnoughts. And while I obviously love adding to my own Dreadnoughts, it's not because he's a Dreadnought, it's because he looks like such a great figure. Anyways, so he's number one. I have him pre-order. Number two is a figure that, like, I think I'm going to keep him because, you know, it depends on how, when they come out, when they release, how much money I have. But I do I have to say that I do think they did a very good job as well on Dial Tone. And Dial Tone, he's kind of an interesting one too. It's, I mean, obviously you can kind of see some kind of evolution happening here. Dial Tone is another character that really stands out. They did a really great job for him. I don't think he's that one-for-one one Real American Hero version. And I don't, and like he's kind of leaning towards the classified version, but like it's staying like a homage to the Real American Hero version. So they done him and he looks, he looks nice and gritty. He looks like, you know, he's dirty. He looks like he's seen some action, but he's also like, you know, one of the computer guys or whatever, right? So... I mean, I think they've done a really good job with him. His accessory, his backpack looks really cool, really faithful to a real American hero version. So I think he is another one that I am, I'm going to plan to keep. Now, if we get to the other two, and there is nothing wrong with uh, Leatherneck and the Saw Viper. They're just, if you, I have to pick and choose, I would rather have Xandar and Dialto. Um, So right away, Leatherneck, he looks cool. But Leatherneck is a classic example of one of these ones I would consider a one-for-one, one, a real American hero upgrade. And there's nothing wrong with that. But to me, like once again, I mean, I have a lot of a real American hero figures. I think I have a Leatherneck figure. Um, he's just not one of my favorite characters. A lot of people do like him. And of course, he was included in that crossover Sergeant Slaughter Transformer uh, Cup figure. And that's pretty cool. But sometimes like I find like, they put him in there, and now he's in classified. It's kind of like a little oversaturation. Maybe they could have, um, you know, spaced him out a little bit. Anyways, Leatherneck looks good, but I, th I don't think I'll pick him up right now. I'll put him in the back burner and maybe pick him up down the line if I can find him for cheap. And then this is an unusual one. The next one is the Saw Viper. And this Saw Viper is a Cobra Troop Builder, obviously. Cobra Troop Builders are hot commodities, and people love them. And you know what? The Saw Viper for a real American hero, not necessarily one of my favorite figures, but I mean, he is super cool, super cool in a real American hero. And I do think, I'm not trying to be negative, I do think they kind of dropped the ball on this guy. Um, obviously, you can tell he's some kind of uh, like tripwire repaint because he kind of uses tripwire's bomb disposal gear. He's got the helmet and stuff like that. But there's just something so goofy on how he looks without the helmet. I look like I'm looking at Christian Bale's Batman or something like that. It's just it's just something weird about him. And I can't kind of get over it. And then at the same time, I because his helmet is removable, I find his his visor helmet is kind of too big and goofy. I don't know. There's just something off about this character. There's nothing wrong with him. If you want to buy 20 of these guys, you got to have your Saw Viper Battalion. There's nothing wrong with that. That's super cool. I'd love to see it. But just for me, he's not at the top of my list. Like, like I said, Xandar and Dial Tone, they're at the top for this wave. I would say the Saw Viper is probably third and the Leathernecks in, in fourth place. So that's just my opinion. Let me know. Like, what do you think? What do you think of Dial Tone, Xandar, Leatherneck, and the Saw Viper? Leave comments below and just give me your opinions on each of these releases. Then, if we move on quickly, what we have next is the, uh, there's the deluxe figures. So they did, they didn't really do name only they just came up with this idea that there's this mass device series coming 
And we'll find out about that in, in a few minutes uh, down the road here in the, in the podcast. So stay tuned for that when we talk New York Comic Con. Um, but back to the deluxe figures. They gave us some 3D reveals, um, 3D render reveals. And we've got Law and & Order and Heavy Duty. And this is the thing about this. Great characters. We're getting Law and, Law and & Order. So that's another movie character. So they're almost done with those movie characters. We get Heavy Duty, another Super Deluxe. I don't know what kind of gun system he's sporting here. He's got some like mech system with a bunch of uh, blast effects. The issue I have here is because Law and Order comes with his pet, you know, Order, and Heavy Duty comes with this huge weapon system, these are both going to be Deluxe figures. And that means a higher price point. And for me, I'm just being a bit more selective on the higher price point figures that I pick up because I don't really find they're necessarily doing anything for me. Like uh, I possibly discussed uh, in previous uh, that I didn't pick up Road Pig because even though Road Pig was cool and Road Pig was an awesome dreadnought, I didn't understand why he came with a dog. I mean, the dog's cool, but... We did we need the dog to raise up the price of Road Pig? I don't think we needed him. So I would have probably, I mean, just put him in a box, a normal box, and skimp on a couple more accessories and make him more accessible. That's what I would have went with. They're kind of turning towards, let's have some more deluxe figures so we can get some more money on a higher price point. It's not necessary for me. Great looking figures. And I'm sure it's going to find a place out there with all the collectors. Good job on Hasbro. Next up. So... I'm trying to run through this because I've already recorded this one, so I'm going to go through it kind of quick. Next up, we're going to talk Transformers at PulseCon. Obviously, this is late information, but just my personal uh, opinions on some of these things. So we'll just jump right in. And I have to be honest, I thought this was really weak, and I was kind of disappointed as a Transformers fan. Right away, we have the Core Class Dino King Combiner Team, which is exclusive to PulseCon not interested in it. We all knew that was coming. Like the day that the core class Dinobots were released, people were like, they're going to repaint this in Dino King. That was like two years ago. We knew it was coming, not interested. And what we will find is a common running theme in this wave is that this is a majority of previously exclusive figures that are now being released to in the mainstream retail. And I wonder if they've just kind of pivot it where like fans were like I can't find these exclusives this is annoying and now they've put them back in the main line so right away we have deluxe cosmos which I've done numerous shorts numerous videos on that he was impossible to find like nobody found him and then like all of a sudden months later maybe a year or two years later he shows up at Ross and people were able to get him for like eight bucks even though you couldn't find him at retail it was so weird Anyways, so it's great to say you see people will get a chance to actually pay, possibly find Cosmos at regular retail. So we'll have to see how that works out. Uh, after that, we have Deluxe Generation 2 Breakdown, which is another weird character because of the original Breakdown. A lot of people could not find that Breakdown. A lot, there's a lot of people out there that are unable to complete their Menasaur builds because they just can't find Breakdown. So, I mean... This is kind of like, it's kind of, it would be weird, but at least it would allow you to put a leg on your Menasaur. You pick up the Generation 2 one, he, he's flipped around anyways. I mean, at least your Menasaur will be complete, but I mean, I it's a, it's a good option, but still, it's sad that the a lot of people just really couldn't find that original breakdown. After that, we have Deluxe Origin Bumblebee. Once again, part of the Buzzworthy Bumblebee series from Target, another exclusive, now injected back into the main line for i guess more people to be able to get deluxe armada wheeljack is an original character i mean original release obviously he's a repaint repaint of like side the side swipe mold but i mean that character actually looks fairly decent for me i actually had all the armada when they were at retail and since then i've scaled back and sold a bunch so i think i don't have a wheeljack anymore but i don't really need that character anyways the voyager ramjet reissue that's pretty sweet. Everyone loves a good seeker and that mold is killer. So it's nice to see Ramjet released again. And that, you know, once again, it, I think the whole idea of this wave is to bring back a bunch of figures that people possibly missed and they can inject them back into the, uh, the main line and have people have another opportunity to pick a lot of these figures up. Next up, we have Voyager 
uh, IDW Tarn. So just a different bit of a color scheme to that awesome Tarn mold, which of course, you know, that face of the Decepticon logo. People love that guy, and it's another chance to get him. And of course, then after we have Tarn, we have the Velocitron Galaxy Shuttle, which that guy was a hot mess. So I don't know if anyone out there remembers, the Galaxy Shuttle pretty much skipped the USA. And a lot of people didn't even like see it, much like Cosmos, that whole Velocitron line was kind of messed up. But for whatever reason, the Velocitron Galaxy Shuttle showed up in Canada. Every Walmart had three or four of them on the shelves. The problem is here in Canada, the exchange rate, the, the higher prices, they were like $76 plus tax. So it was like $84 or $85. They just sat on the shelves. Nobody bought them. And the only people that bought them for the majority of the time were people that were buying them and then shipping or selling them to Americans. So these guys rotted here in Canada. And I don't know. Anyways, it was a hot mess of a thing. So it will be nice to see that once again, this figure gets a second opportunity to show up uh, at mass retail and see if people are actually interested in. Of course, the last figure was the leader overcharged triple changer, which is just this unreleased paint scheme of Blitzwing. Not interested in it personally. I mean, I don't know. Are you guys interested? I, I think we have enough leader triple changers. I don't need a repaint of one. Anyway, so that's just my opinion quickly on those. And then the last thing for Hasbro PulseCon was that everyone was kind of expecting reveals on the Devastator, Studio Series Dev Devastator. And of course, they came out and they talked about that it's going to be delayed. And we'll see a bit more of it later in the month. And we'll talk about that in later in the video as well. So let's get to the next event. So right away, we are going to jump right into something actually relevant and something new. And we're going to talk about New York Comic Con and how that went. And, you know, the funny thing is, I, I mentioned this before, I actually live in uh, Ontario, which is just above New York. And it's so funny because, you know, New York Comic Con is, you know, one of the biggest conventions in the United States, and it's in New York City. And the funny thing is, is that I live like six hours from there, and you don't understand how many years I've said that, hey, you know what, this year, I'm going to go to New York Comic Con. And it's just one of the things that always kind of sneaks up on me. And, you know, I'm like, oh, damn, New York Comic Con's next week. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I should have went. And I, I've never been. Um, you know what? I would like to get there at some point. But to be honest, I don't know if a lot ever happened. So that's kind of funny little fact there. I had the opportunity to go, but I just I never pulled the trigger. Anyways, so let's jump right into it. And we're going to kick off with Transformers. And basically, I'm doing Transformers because I just want to get it out of the way because I don't know what the Transformers team is doing. But between this and Pulsecom, I'm not excited about what they've got coming out lately. Anyways, so I'm just going to run through these. The fact here is that a bunch of this stuff is movie stuff. And me as a Transformers fan, I don't actually enjoy the movie toys. I can watch the movies and I tolerate them. Uh, but the actual toys I don't bother with. So I only collect like Studio Series 86 or like, you know, Legacy Line. But the actual like Michael Bay type movies, I don't collect any of the toys. So first up, we have um, Rise of the Beast Double Punch. And we have uh, DOTM Hatchet. I mean, that guy was in missing in action for a while and he's finally coming to, uh, to a store near you. And then we have Gamer Skywarp, which, you know, I don't really care about either. And then we have 1986 Galvatron. Um, which is kind of weird because they've already done this mold several times. And I guess this is the, this is the thing they do. This is just the better purple version that go would goes more in line with the, uh, studio series 86 line, which is cool, but I've talked about it before. I try not to double dip. I have a perfectly good Galvatron with the matrix of leadership. I'm not picking this guy up. Anyways, it's kind of interesting that he did this. I think sometimes they think Hasbro does it a little wrong. It's like, you know, why did you release two or three versions and then this version? So this is the fourth version of this mold. I don't know how of a hot seller this is gonna be. I think this guy, I think there's a hardcore that buy it for the 86 lineup, they'll get anything, but I don't know, we'll see how it goes. And then the last thing, one people expected them to talk about Devastator, and Devastator was not shown. And once again, we were simply told that it will be available at the 1027 event coming uh, later this month. So, you know what? We'll have to wait to get Devastator news. We will certainly do a video on Devastator. A lot of people are looking toward, looking forward towards 
getting some news on Devastator. We already know how it's going to play out, the how it's the different size and price points, but obviously people want to see actual pictures of this thing in real world. Uh, anyways, um, then we do have a couple other things. There's two collaborative items here. Uh, Transformers Cross Star Wars Mandalorian and one Starfighter. It looks decent. I'm just not into these Star Wars Transformer figures. Um, yeah, anyways, and then the other one is the Transformers Cross Naratu shipping. Um, that one is really different, and I feel like that one is for a specific subgroup of people, of, like, anime fans. So, I mean, it's cool if you're into it, but just not for me. So, I did find New York Comic Con for Transformers news kind of nee, blah. So, anyways, we're just going to skip past that really quickly, and we're going to move to G.I. Joe. And now, of course, like I mentioned a, f a few minutes ago, I actually had all this recorded earlier, went down a couple awesome rants and a couple, like, big explanations, and I lost all that audio, so I just had to start from scratch. And, of course, it's, it's unfortunately, it's never as good the second time, because you're just trying to remember what you did the first time, so... Beer with me, but let's talk about G.I. Joe at New York Comic Con 2024. Okay, let's jump right back into it, and we're talking New York Comic Con, G.I. Joe classified stuff. So right away, render reveals. Um, they did a Footloose. Now, we knew Footloose was coming. He was a previously uh, announced name only, I believe. And you know what? He's an easy prediction. We knew we were going to get a Footloose. The, sh the moment they did Sergeant Slaughter's Mad Marauders, Footloose was on the table, and the fact is, this is just the default green version. You know 100% that the Mad Marauders version is coming down the line in maybe a wave or two from now, because they've got to add him to that collection. And because they've been building those ones out, uh, Footloose is 100% going to that Mad Marauders as well. So expect that in a future wave. Expect that in a future wave. Um, and then, of course, the big thing here is we're finally... Finally getting a G.I. Joe classified quote unquote play set to build out world and you know involve some world building for this line. It's been discussed for a long time that this is why we need it, and we're finally getting something. So let's discuss about this. Um right away. It's basically if we had to break it down, it's basically a Cobra bunker, okay? Um, and just in a classified version. Um so and what I, uh, we'll talk about the figure. It basically comes with an urban camo alley viper with, you know, regular accessories, the shield, the mask. I'm sure it comes with a bunch of guns. Um, so the urban, uh, the urban camo alley viper, that looks super awesome. One thing that I'll point out that they did with the bunker, which is super smart of them. And from the pictures that we've seen, from the pictures that we've seen, it appears that the bunker is actually a Cobra Troop Builder in itself. Um, from the pictures, it looks like if you look at the bunker, it can basically be stacked on top of itself to build higher bunkers. Um, it comes with a ladder system and everything. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of different. Now, if I'm going to give you my honest opinions on the bunker, I don't think the actual bunker's that great. I mean, I've heard, I've already heard it referred to as an outhouse. I mean... I don't know. I think I don't know what they're going for here. I guess uh, they were like going for that stackability, like I just mentioned. Um, I do like the sandbag motif, um, and I guess it's 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 a step in the right direction. I just don't know if it's what a lot of people envisioned. I do think it's a step in the right direction, though. Let's hope we get something GI Joe related playset in the next wave or coming waves, like that. You know. Checkpoint Alpha or the Watchtower, just to, you know, to, as a counterpoint to this uh, Cobra uh, establishment. So, you know, it's kind of cool. I, it's a step in the right direction. Um, you know, it's going to be pricey um, because, it, once again, they've basically packed a figure with a vehicle in this case. You know what I mean? So, you've got that extra $30 price point on top of the vehicle, or in this case, a playset. So it's got to be that regular price of like $100, um, depending where you're buying it in, what country you are. But that's all we can do. So, I mean, I'm not super excited about it, but I do think that it is a step in the right direction. So let us know in the comments below, what do you think about this new classified Cobra bunker? Uh, let us know. Okay. 
Next up, of course, they added to the Legacy uh, 60th Anniversary Star with the Firefighter. I don't really care about that. It's not related to G.I. Joe. I'm skipping past it. Um, we're talking um, future mainline stuff. So earlier in the episode, we talked PulseCon and we talked about name only stuff. And this thing about this quote unquote mass device line came up. And that's what the name drop from the last convention was. Finally, we got to see something of this mass device series. Now, obviously, it's probably going to be an ongoing series where they have like special colors or like, you know, accessories that make you maybe make a mass device. Um, you can, your imagination can run a little wild and you can dial it in pretty quickly to expect what we're going to get. Now, what we got here in our first view was a, what one can only consider a deluxe figure where it comes, comes with a cartoon colored snake eyes and a polar bear. And I don't know how I feel about this. I'll be honest with you. And I did a big rant about this quote unquote rant in my lost segment. And I'm not really sure how I went with this, but Long story short, this is another case where, like, I don't know why this is being made. I feel like I'm not a big fan of them making the animals, okay? The non-team member animals, like this polar bear. This polar bear and the snake eyes were, represent a very specific scene in one episode of G.I. Joe. So, you know, you're releasing a super deluxe figure that's going to be expensive to replicate one specific scene. I think the super hardcore Judge O collectors will pick this up. I do not know about the casual Judge O fans or uh, casual is a bad word. The not so hardcore people, the people that maybe are on a budget, they only pick up their favorite figure. The fact is, do we really need another Snake Eyes figure? What is the Snake Eyes number like 10 in the classified line? There's only 150 170 figures and we've already got like 10 snake eyes so uh i'm not really sold on this uh if you feel differently feel free to leave your comments below i do think it looks cool and uh, uh, the snake eyes figure looks cool because it's kind of like that cartoon coloring i just don't know if we needed this right now and i just don't know if this what this is what i would have shown off to kind of like kick off this subline because I don't know how other people are going to feel about this and is it going to be worth their time picking up. That is just my off the cup feelings. I just, I'm kind of sick of the animals because like Road Pig, they throw in the animals and the animals just jack up the price. They're super nicely detailed, but they just jack up the price. I'd much rather not have the animals. I'm not trying to build a Jejo classified zoo filled with animals. And I feel like a lot of people now just have bins of animals. Um, anyways, so it's just not for me. And that's just my opinion. Let me know if you completely feel completely different. So if we move on from there, we've got the retro and I'll be honest with you, the retro is where it was at. And like they announced three figures, they showed off three figures and those things were pure perfection. If you are into this line for nostalgia and you are a real American hero collector, these things have totally, totally nailed it. So right away, we have Retro uh, Rock and Roll, who has that very classic, just fully green uh, outfit on with that. He's rocking the beard. He's got his big old machine gun. This, this figure is amazing, 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 amazing. Great job. Great job. And nice addition to the classic G.I. Joe Retro line. Um, then of course we have the retro Cobra Viper. It's like perfection. It is, they basically took the original G.I. Joe Cobra, uh, sorry, the Cobra Viper and just upscaled them to classify because they totally rocked it. All the coloring, all the paintings, they're the perfect color. He looks amazing. And you know what? There's going to be people out there that buy like 20 of these because they need to troop build this guy like right now. Um, I, th I think it's probably one of the better G.I. Joe retros right now. Um, highly, highly recommend uh, pre-ordering it. I'm sure it's available at a million different spots online. Then, next up, they had the Retro Mindbender, another figure. So this one is a double whammy 
because a lot of collectors out there were unable to get the original super deluxe mind bender with all the accessories and the lab equipment and stuff like that. So they missed out on them. Um, but this is an amazing way that G.I. Joe and Hasbro is doing it so that people who want a mind bender figure can get one at a decent retail price and not have to overpay that collector price. So Hasbro's kind of dialing back into this. You know, we just seen this earlier with the PulseCon Transformer releases. And basically, they were all previous exclusives that are now coming to the main line. Um, and it's basically, this is what they're doing with Mindbender. Mindbender, he looks right out of the uh, comic books. He looks right, he like they upscaled the G.I. Joe, a real American hero figure from back in the 80s. The, boom, this is the classified figure. He's got the cape. He's got the little brain scanner thingy, majiggy. And like, he looks amazing. The colors are popping on all three of these different figures. They did an amazing job. It's something you're proud of. I'm almost tempted to give up on the mainline classified line and just collect the uh, retro line at this point. I'm not really sure. Uh, I mean, it's tough. I don't like to double dip. I don't like to double dip. I've got the rock, rock and the original classified rock and roll, so I don't technically need the retro rock and roll. But man, they just they're doing such a good job with this retro line. I mean, they're killing it. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Um, of course, then, if we move on from the retro, we have the name only reveals. And so we've got some hits, we've got some misses and some me. Okay, so right away, the first one to hit is Darklon. And I don't know how to say his name properly, but this guy, amazing. And I think, I think if they're done right in the classified way, I think he could be a truly amazing figure. Spectacular. I think he's going to be one of the top ones. He looks really cool. They've done a really good. He has super potential to be like one of the top classified figures. And I'm looking forward to seeing more about him, of course. Then after him. So we got one who's meh and one who's gross. Like Where are we going to go? Well, let's, let's talk about version four snake eyes. Okay. I just complained to you like three minutes ago. We didn't need another Snake Eyes. And now they've gone and put version 4 Snake Eyes in with the name only reveals. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, why another Snake Eyes? But the only thing that has saved it for me complaining about this version 4 Snake Eyes is we know what color he is. He's the blue one. So he's definitely going to pop with new colorings like blue and that orange. And I think there's some gray on him. So, I mean, at least he is not that Black Knight Snake Eyes that we've seen 10 times already in the series. Um, so, that kind of saves it for me. It's, it's Snake Eyes, but it's something a little different. And so, I mean, in that way, I don't know if I would get him. I'd have to see him. He might look really cool. Uh, I think he's going to look pretty cool. The uh, The real American hero version of him is pretty cool. Um, so I, I'm going to have to wait and see him. But, I, you know, I'm on the fence about him. If he's cool, I'll get him. If he's not, I'll just complain that they released another Snake Eyes. So then, Crystal Ball. What are the people at Hasbro doing sometimes? Like, I don't understand. Like, it's like they throw the names in a hat and just pick it out. And they're like, no, 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 no. Next one, next one. Oh, okay, we'll go with this one. Who, who asked for Crystal Ball? I mean, we're already into the freaks of the Cobra, right? We've got uh, Raptor just came out and, you know, we've done Croc Master already. The, the freaks and the geeks, the freaks and Crystal Ball. Nobody, nobody wants Crystal Ball. And I don't really understand how he got greenlit. Like, I don't expect him. I mean, he's going to be a shell former for sure. I mean, the guy's a big old loser. I, I just don't know. Am I completely wrong about Crystal Ball being, like, not cool and, like, nobody wanting him? Like, the guy has, like, a, a flashy shield that, like, hypnotizes you. And, like, he's got, like, isn't he bald? Like, oh, my gosh. Like, I don't know what they're doing. Just, no, nobody wants Crystal Ball. I don't know how. There's a million other G.I. Joe or Cobra figures I'd rather see name revealed than Crystal Ball. You know, maybe they do it on purpose so... People like us talk about this and get some press about it. I'm not really sure, but no, I don't want a crystal ball. I'm moving on. So overall, I think New York Comic Con was a success for G.I. Joe. I don't know how successful it was for Transformers, but you know, I, I feel like Transformers is going to bounce back. 
They've got something new coming, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment right now. So, back at it. Moving on from the convention scene, let's talk about Transformers here for a second. So, I'd previously done a video, say a few months ago, where the rumored new uh, line of Transformers coming up after Legacy was going to be called Transformers Generation Prime. Now, according to the latest news, the name of this series has now changed, and it's going to be called Transformers Age of the Primes. Now, I think the story is pretty much the same. It revolves around the 13 Primes and, you know, the characters that are involved in that. I mean, me personally, I guess we'll we'll definitely see the release of, say, the 13 Primes in this series. I personally really don't have any interest in those particular figures. Um, like, I don't mind the Transformers lore, but I don't necessarily need action figures of those guys just for my personal collection. So, but that being said, Age of the Primes does have some apparently banger uh, listings coming because we've already seen some of the listings uh, from JT Prime 17. And of course, I think for most people out there, the biggest thing here is that we're going to get another combiner, at least one, maybe two. Uh, that of course, the first one we're talking about is, of course, Superion and a bulk of his pieces are slated for the first wave of the series. That's going to be so awesome because they did such a great job on Menasaur. I think a lot of people out there, including myself, are just going to assume they're going to rock Superion. Now, the thing about Superion, the best version of Superion that mainstream Hasbro has ever produced was the previous Combiner Wars version, which I still have. Now, in a previous video, I think I discussed that I actually never liked the, the Menasaur Combiner Wars version, but I had him because I that series was really good. Um, but the actual physical appearance of that Menasaur was never my favorite. So the moment I thought it was a possibility that I would be able to collect the Legacy Menasaur, I sold the Combiner Wars Menasaur for I think it was like $150 or something. Basically, it helped pay for my now legacy Menasaur, which I've complete, uh, but the stone boxes. Um, so here comes the dilemma. What do I do with the Combiner Wars Superior? He's a pretty decent figure, but uh, I said even earlier on in this video, I normally don't really double dip. I'm sort of the type of collector that once I have a version of a figure, unless a new better version comes out, I keep that figure. But as soon as a better one comes out, often I'll replace that original figure. And so if we're talking about getting a modern day um, Superion in Age of the Primes, it might be time for me to let that com Combiner War Superion go. I don't know. See, the thing is, like, it's a kind of like a risk versus reward. How close you let it go to um, the release of the uh, new version. So, I mean, somebody out there might not know that there is a Superion, a new Superion coming. So they'd be more likely to uh, purchase your uh, Combiner War one. But as obviously the time takes closer to that release, the value of the Combiner Wars version uh, slowly decreases. So what do you guys think in the comments? Should I like pull the trigger and sell the Combiner Wars Superion or hold on to it for a bit more? Or dare I say, just hold on to it the Combiner Wars one, and also build a Age of the Primes version. So I'm kind of I'm kind of in a dilemma. Not really sure what to do. If I had to choose right this second, and I knew 100% that I was getting that Age of the Prime Superion, I would definitely go about selling the Combiner Wars one. The problem right now is I think I need to see like some leaked photos of that new Superion. To see how he really, A, combines against the Menasaur, or B, even looks in general. How, like, say, the individual figures look and appear. So, there's a couple of, like, things here I got away. But, uh, when it comes down to it, I do think I will try to make sure I get the Age of the Primes Superion complete. 
Now, here's the thing. Um, if I go back a few weeks, um, I didn't make my own video about it because I didn't really have enough content to go with it at the time. There's rumors that there's been a Bruticus pieces being made as well. And I believe people seen um, th uh, rumors of blast off coming. And so, I mean, that is an idea that there's even a second combiner coming, which would be totally awesome because I, I really like these super uh, cartoon accurate modern representations from Hasbro. I think they're doing a very good job with it. So, I mean, we'll have to wait for that one. Hopefully, maybe like a wave two or even a wave three um, details comes out soon. Uh, JT Prime 17 can get those uh, leaked to the internet and we'll find out more details. So that's, uh, I'm going to keep my eye on that one. You, you guys should too. So after that, that's a new series. Of course, we're still doing with Missing Link from Takara. And you know what? Like during my absence here, some news came out. And basically, they're moving full, uh, full steam ahead with this Missing Link uh, series. And I think they've got some good work ahead of them. Um, so, of course, just as a recap, we've seen Prime. Uh, and, of course, he's fully articulated. Uh, G1 Toy. Uh, then we've seen Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper. And the same thing, same deal. They have just become fully articulated with arms and their limbs are movable. Way more adjustable than they were in the original figure. But while keeping that original feel and look to them as well. And then, of course, the big news is that we can expect the Sunstreaker coming soon. He's already in development and we've seen some pictures. I've posted some pictures to my community page. So check that out if you have not seen them before. But Sunstreaker is definitely on his way. And then, of course, the big, big rumor is that at some point, looks like somebody went back to the archives and found an unreleased, unmade RC uh, in Generation 1 toy that basically they kind of teased that we might get part of the Missing Link series at some point. Which, you know, for diehard collectors, I think that'd be really cool to get like kind of this like piece ripped from time that like we you thought you might get at some point, but it didn't happen. But, you know, you've got the figures to say like it is happening. So I, I will have to wait and see more about that. Uh, for me, um, the Missing Link Sunstreaker, there's something... I think he has potential and you know, you really can't pass judgment until you see him perfectly colored and modeled. Um, I think the arms for some reason appear very long to me, but it just might be the angle that the proto, the demo um, shot as giving off. Um, I do think it, they all have potential. So, I mean, RC looks pretty funky um, from the original design. And of course, we also have that previously unreleased Unicron design, which is basically if Unicron swallowed a basketball and he's just like, boom, I'm just all basketball and arms and legs. I think it's pretty hideous myself, but I'm sure once again, the hardcore collectors out there would love to get their hands on it. I'm sure it'll happen at some point. I think, I mean, I do think they'll continue on with this line. And if I had to guess, basically at this point, I'm thinking for Decepticons, we could see redos of um, Blitzwing and or Astro Train. Um, these guys, like, I find, uh, first of all, Astro Train's robot form is a lot better than Blitzwing's. Um, Blitzwing is a brick. And I do feel like for this extended Missing Link series... I think they need to focus on a lot of Generation 1 Transformers that would qualify as a brick. Um, you know, very little articulation. No, you know, you got to use all imagination to play with that thing. But I do think a lot of these figures could uh, suffer from um, just being, having more articulation in their arms and their legs. Um, sorry. I think a lot of these figures, the bricks, they suffer for having a lack of articulation. And I think a big fix for a lot of these figures would simply be give their arms and their legs better articulation, which you can basically do by just putting in a couple of joints or whatever. Um, so I do think probably Blitzwing, Astro Train, would they dare do a Seeker right now? I don't know. He might get Starscream, but you know, 
we'll see how that goes. So, you know, has certain certainly a lot of potential, and I think they're going to continue with it. I'm sure we'll see other figures like more mini bots, more Autobots, more Decepticons. Dare they do a combiner down the road? We'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Now, this next section here. Oh my gosh, guys. This this is something true and dear to my heart. And I don't know where to put this, so I'm putting it here in the podcast. Let's talk about Facebook Marketplace for a few minutes. So, Facebook Marketplace, I mean, there's people out there that hate Facebook. And they're like, I'm never getting on Facebook. And there's people out there that love it and just like read random stuff. And the thing with Facebook is that myself... I don't use it for personal use, as in I don't post to say, hey, my kids are doing this, or look at your kids and I'm liking your kids' photos. I simply use Facebook for Facebook Marketplace and their groups. And it is possible to find great deals on there. And I've done thousands of deals on Facebook, but there's a couple of things that kill me. And the number one thing that kills me about Facebook Marketplace and will make me automatically back away from your listing and never inquire is when you see that dreaded almighty make me an offer. Make me an offer on deals makes me cringe so much and I hate it. I often actually will back out of a deal as soon as the word make me offer, make me an offer comes out of the other person's mouth because make me an offer is the dumbest thing ever. Obviously, the person who is selling said item, Transformers, G.I. Joe, has an idea in their head of what the item is worth. And what, you see, there's two things. It's what the item is actually worth and what is uh, acceptable, what you would accept to pay for that said item and sell it on your out of your collection. Um, and the thing is, the make me an offer is basically just a catch-all because Basically, what that person is saying by saying, make me an offer, is that they are not confident in what they think this item is worth, okay? Because once again, if they knew what it was worth and they felt like, you know what, I'm going to list it correctly, I'm not listing it too high, so it won't sell, and I'm not listing it too low, so it sells too quickly, and I miss out on money, they don't know what it is worth, so what they do, as I hate it so much, they say, make me an offer, in the hopes that Huh, I hope this Transformer, I think it might be worth $50, but maybe it's worth $400 and that random person will see it and we go like, oh, that's a super limited edition and I'm going to ask this guy if he'll take $400 from it because he must know it's worth a lot of money. And basically, make me an offer is a catch-all so the person selling it can be lazy and, and hope that you will bid more than they will list it for because they'll jump at it. Hey, this is a Transformers worth $50. Make me an offer. So they're hoping somebody offers you $80 for it and go like, yeah, sure, I'll take $80 for it. And it ticks me off because it just kills the system because the thing is, make me an offer. And you go in and go, well, you know what? Like you, you're t- internalizing yourself and I often do this myself. See, the thing is, like we talked about a couple seconds ago, things are worth a certain value, but they're also, there's a value that it's worth to you. So this magical transformer that we're talking about in this example, it may only be worth actually $50. But to me, maybe I have it, maybe I just need a piece off it, it's only worth $20. So I, the person says, make me an offer, and I go, well, you know, it's only worth $20 to me, I understand that it's worth maybe more than that. Hey, sir, good sir, would you accept $20 for this? And then the person will get back to you and go, no, I won't accept $20 for this. Crickets. And those crickets are them not telling you the price that they will accept because they obviously had one worked out in their head. And so you go back and go like, huh, they didn't accept 20. Hmm, well, well, it's either it's not worth more than that to me, so I'll give up. Or you really want it. And you're like, well, I mean, I better go higher. Maybe I'll, I'll offer them 60 and they're a $50 transformer that they didn't feel like listing for 50 now made them an extra $10 above what they were going to list it for. And that's what ticks me off because it's a lazy way of doing Facebook marketplace. You should be forced to put up a price of anything you're selling. A lot of forums are like that now. Anyways, 
Um, so it, it, it ticks me off and you can see I'm kind of getting angry about this, but you know what? We're going to move past it. But so like often if I, if I see people with make me an offer listings, uh, and on something that I want to buy, what I will do, I will actually send them a message and say, Hey, do you have a price in mind for this? To try to basically trick them or stir their, their intelligence on to be like, Oh yeah, I actually would like $50 for this item. And then I can decide, well, you know, is that item worth the $50 to me or is it less uh, not worth the $50 to me? And that's how things work on um, purpose and works. That's how it should work. But that's often not the case. And what will happen is you'll offer your money and the person will just, they won't tell you. They're, they're waiting for you to outbid their internal offer. And it kills me because it is so dumb. So, so, so dumb. Anyways. The other thing, while we're on the topic of uh, basically Facebook Marketplace slash garage sales, because make me an offer happens at garage sales as well, and it ticks me off, I just want to walk away from the person, is garage sale pricing. Garage sale pricing. And then the, you say, what is garage sale pricing? Okay, there's two price methods at garage sales. You A, price something because you want to make a profit. Hey, I've got a lamp. And it's worth $50. I want $45 for it. Now, said lamp, you're trying to sell. It's not in your house. It's in your garage. So why are you trying to get top dollar for it? The other method is garage sale pricing, which I refer to. And that's when you're willing to basically accept anything because you just want this item out of your house. So the lamp example, you know, hey, how much you want for the lamp? I don't know, $5. $10, not $45 or $50, because you know, not everyone walks around a garage sale area with like hundreds of dollars in their pocket. We're not all froggy flips. But, anyways, so garage sale pricing is discounted. People have a purpose. They don't want to bring this stuff back into their house when the garage sale ends. So they listed cheaply. So the idea is that. They get a little money, you get an item, everyone leaves happy. The number one, number two, number three thing on my garage sale tactics here is it should be illegal for children to price their own goods. And you're like, what are you talking about? Kids don't know the value of things and often get the pricing of stuff wrong. Hey, sir. Hey, kid, you've got some Hot Wheels there. How much are those? And the kid looks at them and is like, huh, those are cool, pretty cool Hot Wheels. I already liked playing though with those when I was a little younger. I'm going to tell that gentleman that those Hot Wheels are $5 each. Um, Yeah, no, you can keep your $5 each Hot Wheel when they're just junk ones and that they're $2 or $1.50 in the store, brand new. Good luck with that. And that's what kills me when people at their kids price. When I say kids, I mean small kids. Like you'll see like people at their five, six, seven year olds price their own stuff they used to own and they still do own why would that kid want to sell his memories like why anyways it frustrates me don't ever let the kids price their own stuff because it's the dumbest thing ever anyways should we move on should we move on because i'm i'm in a ranting mood here now just as a quick side note more video game stuff it looks like to me this came out of nowhere uh minecraft transformers is out and available in the minecraft store and i believe if I do a conversion properly, it's like roughly ten dollars, twelve dollars, eleven fifty maybe. And I have to be honest, it, it didn't even look like Minecraft. It looked like some kind of weird game. And I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. It has potential for sure. Yeah, anyway, so basically the Minecraft devastation. Sorry, haha, it's not Minecraft Devastation, because that's the cool game. It's Minecraft Transformers, which appears to act like devastation. Um, it definitely looks like it's worth checking out. So, I mean, you can always cash in some Microsoft reward points and get that for free. That's kind of a good idea. I might have to look into that. Anyways, that thing is coming. And then quickly, while we're still on the, the uh, topic of video games, I had done that other video where, you know, I think personally, see, I am a pretty hardcore Xbox person. So one of the things, my other hobbies is Xbox and video games. And I watch a lot of YouTubers about their video game content and some of that. The fact is, that the Transformer games for Xbox 360 are, I would say, more than likely at some point going to show up on the marketplace in the next 
six months. And the thing is, my number one, it was a very popular video. People wanted to know about it, you know, about where I mentioned the rating boards for the Australian board is happening. Um, the fact is, is that the number one comment on that video or the number one running trend was people were asking, do you think it'll come to PlayStation? Will it come to PlayStation? I hope it comes to PlayStation. It better come to PlayStation. And the thing is, I'm pretty sure if these games ever do come back, uh, they'll simply go to all the other platforms as well. So like Steam, PlayStation, Switch, of course, Xbox, computer. I'm sure we'll see them at all of these platforms. And you know what? That works out for everyone because the more people playing a game is great. Maybe one can really hope that they work on that cross-platform services with this, these games because it would be awesome if they could totally link the player base from PlayStation and Xbox. That would rock. Anyways, that is something to consider for sure. Now, last topic of the pod this week, this month's podcast. And I'm really going to try my darndest to make sure the podcast for next month happens on time. Trust me. Why don't you wire trying to trust me why not hit the like button and hit subscribe if you like what we're doing here we're trying to get our watch numbers up on this podcast because i do think there's some valuable information in here but i need the fans to check it out now last thing it's kind of a two-parter restoration projects so i've taken out a couple of restoration projects one gi joe one transformers works out perfectly because this is the everything transformers everything gi joe podcast so that works out great. Anyways, first one, first one. For G.I. Joe, a real American hero, I'm restoring a Cobra Liquidator. And you're like, what's a Cobra Liquidator? Uh, Cobra Liquidator, I believe is from 1991 or 1992. And basically it is a Cobra jet that uh, has a dual function that acts like a water gun. Okay, so it has a handle that shoot, comes down, you press the trigger, shoots water. I don't really care about any of that. I just want the actual vehicle so I can make a Cobra jet. And for some reason, I've really latched onto this. Um, I have wanted this Cobra liquidator for years. And I kind of figured at some point I'd stumble across one, but I haven't as of yet. But I got a little closer. Um, anyways, the, but the reasoning behind the Cobra liquidator is basically um, I'm interested in it because I think it's the first episode of the Mass Effect. I'm oh, sorry, the <laughs> the Mass Device miniseries. It's late here, guys. I'm getting tired. The Mass uh, Device miniseries, where I think the Joes are at the Air Force base and they get attacked by Cobra, and Cobra gets attacked by these like weird single seat black jets. And I mean, it's not a one for one, but it highly rec um, highly. Um, looks uh, like the Cobra Liquidator toy. And so that's good enough for me. I want to get one, put major blood in it. Boom, I'm done. Now, so Facebook forum group. Um, I've told a couple of people that I'm interested. Another guy I've met on the Facebook forum has recently started a Liquidator project as well. And he actually ended up with a second Liquidator shell and he's giving it to me for free. I have to just pay to ship it to my house because he's a little ways away. It'll cost me a few dollars to do that. But totally worth it. Now fast forward. Another person already had a Facebook claim sale. A couple of weeks ago. And I was able to score a four pack of the missiles. For the liquidator. So that's already came in the mail. So basically I'm building this thing. So the shell needs everything. I need a liquidator canopy. I need a liquidator. I think the back wheels are separate. And they're yellow. Uh, I need some of those. Uh, and then I'm assuming there's a front, um, the front wheel as well. For the middle section, which is the gun section, the gun handle, I'm not too worried about that because I don't really care about that play feature. Right now, I'm more concerned about making it a functioning Cobra jet. And so I got to get on that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let me know if you actually have a Cobra liquidator in your collection. And if you happen to have an extra canopy, for a Cobra liquidator, let me know. Another thing, just quickly, which I forgot to do because I'm tired, um, that you can actually order uh, reproduction stickers for the Cobra liquidator. Now, Toy Hacks doesn't have them. Um, I actually contacted them; they don't have them at the moment. The other company, the um, oh, the Rattler company that does this, and I can't remember their name offhand. Um, I'll probably put links below in the description at some point. 
uh, they do do them. I'm going to get them from them. And basically, when I get the shell, I'll be stickering them all up and it'll look brand new. I need that canopy though. If you have one, let me know. Reach out. Leave a comment uh, in the, uh, leave a message in the comments below. Now, next up, G uh, sorry, we just did the G.I. Joe Real American Hero restoration projects. And now I've got at least three Transformer restoration projects as well. So I've talked about it before. One of the things I love to do is I love to restore Generation 1 Transformers. And when I say restore, look, I'm not like uh, Poly Toy or whatever that company, that, that YouTuber guy out there where he like takes it apart and he's like, you know, dremeling it and everything and he cleans it off. No, I mean, basically my level of restoration right now is basically to, you know, take out some screws, have an alternate version, take out some screws, swap some parts, swap a leg, swap an arm, replace a missing arm, and basically take two mediocre Generation 1 Transformers and bring them into just one. Um, and so you end up with an actual usable transformer. So that's what I'm doing right now. Right now, though, for my restoration projects, I have a Sideswipe who, he's pretty rough, man. Like, I feel like I need to get a better one and use this guy's donor parts. So we'll see how that goes. It's, it's when you're doing restorations, it's you're, you're doing a long thing. So like you gotta be patient at times anyways. So that's what I'm doing. So we got the side swipe. We got his brother, generation one sun shrieker. Now, uh, last year, a couple years ago, I actually complete when I say completed, I had a good bot version, robot mode, alt mode of sun streaker. And now since then, up until the last TFCon, I didn't have some of the parts. I do have now the parts. I have his hands and uh, so I can put them together. I just don't have his blasters or his thrusters to go on into his shoulder. I don't have two of those, but my guy's in a good condition. I have an extra one that was just a body and just recently a trade uh, where I got Sideswipe uh, and um, my other restoration project, which I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, I got a piece of Sunstreaker and I was able to transplant his kind of canopy onto his uh, his uh, body. And it's looking pretty well. I, th I think that's some good trade fodder. I could throw in the, uh, the big old bag there for a trade. Um, but that being said, um, the last one that I got is I ended up getting a Generation 1 Cliff Jumper. And I don't, you know, it's weird. I have a lot of Transformers. I don't have a cliff jumper and I don't have a bumblebee, original ones. Um, so right now the cliff jumper, his one of his like feet say that that rotates down. One of his feet are missing. Both of his legs are still there. So if I could find a random one, I could grab the foot off. I'm good. Uh, but like right now, I think it is doing pretty good. Um, so I have the cliff jumper the side swipe and the sun streaker, the cliff jumper. I just need to replace his foot. I actually, I might cheat the system. Once again, it's not cheating the system. If it's just for yourself, you're only cheating the system on anything that you do. If you're going to try to pass it off as an original, which I would never do. I do have somewhere buried in my toys. I have the, I have the generation one, um, cliff jumper, um, keychain. And I'm, I'm just wondering if it's the same color red, I just might take his foot off that and put it on the Generation 1 one and make sure he's okay. So I'll have to see how that goes. I mean, that is basically the podcast right now. And you know what? Before you check out, I do need you guys to maybe, you know, give, leave this video a like. I'd like to build this community here with the podcast and, you know, give it a few, give it a watch. I do need, I'll be honest with you, I need to get my watch hours up on YouTube. That's a little YouTube behind the scenes. Nobody cares how the sausage is made, right? But that's YouTube behind the scenes. So you know what? If you're liking these videos, leave a like, maybe watch it for a little bit. Um, get so I can get my time up. Anyways, it, they're coming about once a month in the middle of the month. Uh, obviously I'll try to get better back on schedule. I hopefully get the one for November done. The December one is, could be iffy depending because December is always a busy month. January is a lock for sure. Anyways, so that is the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you found something useful in this podcast where we talk about everything Transformers and everything G.I. Joe. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.